From the time we're born, we're dying. And in between these two major events in all of our lives, every single one of us live. And we're all the same. We all have high points and we have low points. We have successes and we have failures. We will have good times and bad times. And indeed, we will have lots of hard times in our lives. And it is the way that we deal with that that makes a difference. But as I speak here, I know each and every one of you are dreamers. And you all have your own dreams. Whether it's the pregnant mother giving birth to a child, whether it's a student passing an exam, whether it's someone getting a job, or indeed whether it's to be in love or not, we all have our own Everest. What I would like to do in the next few minutes is to bring you on a journey. I want to bring you on a journey to the top of the world. It's a dream that I had when I was at the lowest point in my life, when I tried to take my own life. It is the 27th of May, 1995, and I'm in an amazing place. I'm now crossing the highest gangplank on planet Earth. It's at a place where the oxygen level is down to 33% of what it is at sea level. I can barely breathe. At the same time, beautiful skies. It was minus 40 degrees Celsius. That's so cold, I couldn't feel my fingers or my toes. I was afraid in case I get frostbite. I was in a hazy dream world as there was thousands of feet fall off on each side of me as I was crossing the highest gangplank on planet Earth. <sighs> Something very strange happened to me then, and I didn't know it was reality or a dream. My spirit had left my body and was looking down on that mortal being as he was actually like a torpedo focused on the summit ahead. <sighs> step by step, by lingering step, I inched my way to the summit. There I was thinking of the fact that some of my friends and my critics had said, you will never do it. I was a bricklayer. You will never do it. I chose to ignore their taunts of negativity and decide to go for it and follow my dream. And there I was, I put my foot on the summit of Everest. The blood was gushing through my veins. I had to shiver up my spine and my hair, my hair was literally standing on my head. Okay, I did have hair. <laughs> so here I was, and I made those last few steps onto the top of the world. And you know what it felt like? It felt amazing. I was now standing on a patch of ground the size of your kitchen table, five and a half miles high in the sky. A place that was created with great tectonic forces over 200 million years in the making. And I, Pat Falvey from Cork, was on top of the world. There was no roaring crowds. There was no television cameras. There was just me and my two partners there, James Allen and Mike Smith, on top of the world. And as I did that, I actually put my hand into my pocket. I was so excited and so proud. And I took from it something very special to me. The emblem of my country, same as Tenzing did, the symbol of my tradition and culture. And this I put on an ice axe. And then I caught it and I rose it high and I said, yes, I'm standing on top of the world. Well, as I did that, I actually took my camera out and I took this shot and I went north, south, east and west. And as I turned, I remained conscious of the fact that this was not just another climbing exploit for me. This expedition did not start there 50 days previous in the foothills. It started nine years previously when I tried to take my own life. Things were going so bad. We were going through one of the worst recessions in Ireland ever. I was there, I was 29 years of age. I had everything. I was successful. 
I had a big house, flashy cars, more money than you could actually think of. And on top of that, I was married. And I had two children, Brian and Patrick. And then, my life just fell apart. The banks called in my personal guarantee. I couldn't afford to pay my bills. I was proud. But worse still, and I know some people have experienced this, I was in fear of having my house repossessed because I couldn't afford to pay the mortgage. You know how I felt? I felt I was a failure. I felt I had let everyone down. I went into a state of self-depression. My self-esteem was at an all-time low. And you know what I did then? There I was on the 6th of September, 1986, and I was driving in my car towards a river, the River Lee in Cork, towards an open wharf on the quayside. And I was actually, there was sweat, sweat of fear running down my face. As the river hurled towards me, all of a sudden, my two kids flashed in front of me. And what did I do? I jammed on the brakes. And as I jammed on the brakes, the car screeched to a halt. And I said, oh my God, what have I done? The car stopped just four inches from the edge with a bonnet all over the, the edge of it. Well, what did I do? I didn't know why I had done that. I put my hands on my face and I, my, my face and my hands and I cried and I said, oh my God. And I cried for about 10 minutes and then embarrassed, I backed away from the pier, an emotional wreck. That was the worst time I ever had. When I came back, I told my wife and I told my kids about what had happened. I told my friends, I told my parents, and something amazingly happened once that happened. The people that loved me, that had my back, the unsung heroes came behind me. They motivated me now to have new goals, new ambitions, and that would allow me to go on to the next phase of my life. Three weeks later, I was there in my office, and a guy called Val Dean called in. He was the father of one of my secretaries, and he said, Pat, will you go hill walking? Hill walking, I thought to myself. Doesn't he realize his daughter could be sacked? So here I was, I took up hill walking. The following week I went. I climbed a small mountain, 2,400 feet. And I said, yes! It was amazing. I was getting away from the hustle and bustle of modern day life. I put my brain on the shelf. The following week I just wanted to climb something else. And I climbed Caron Tool. And when I was on top of Caron Tools, the banks were trying to take us to court to take our family home. I lost three nights sleep. And just take this into consideration. Caron Tool was my Everest. I thought I was going to die. And when I got to the top of Caron Tool, I was so excited. I turned to Val, and I put my hand out, and I shook his hand, and I said, Val, and he said, what's wrong, Pat? I said, Val, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. <laughs> well, believe it or not, the journey began. And that was the catalyst that took me on a journey that had many smaller successes along the way. And I'll explain that later. I planned it, I visualized it, I broke it down. I didn't take no for an answer, and I didn't believe anyone that was my critic to say that I couldn't. Now, here I was. Nine years later, I was on top of the world with my two friends, James and Mike. And as we were there, I looked out over the world. And we said we must go because we could die. <laughs> that was quite obvious. And as we walked away from the top of the world, we gave a big bear hug, as you could see the three lads there. And as we did, James turned to me and with excitement, he said, Pat, he said, what are you doing next? <laughs> what am I doing next? I was there excited because I learned from 1986 to have further dreams, further goals. And what did I do? I said, James, I'm going to climb the highest point on each of the seven continents of the world. Well, with that in mind, we walked away from that summit and many more Everest took place afterwards. Now, my expeditions have taken me right around the world. The highest, the coldest, the loneliest, the most remote and dangerous places on this planet. I have crossed deserts, glaciers, and jungles to fulfill the ambitions and dreams of the people that I work with, and indeed, myself. I have also lived, I've been fascinated about psychology, with over 32 tribes of people around the world, the Dani, the Lani, the Azmats, the Sherpas, the Chinese, the Inuits, trying to find out what it is 
that drives man. So it's the evolution of the species. Me and you, the whole world are the same. Well, on that note, that's what I have done with a great passion over the years. And what I have found is that it's all about attributes. And what I want to do is I want to pass on to you some of the attributes that were passed to me as I actually came and developed my own life. When I was young, I had a dream. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And when my project failed, my father came to me and I said, Dad, should I give up? And he said, son, he said, you're a dreamer. And remember this, every one of you are the same. We're all the same. We all have dreamers. He said, you're a dreamer. So he said, dream and dream big. But I remember he said, son, it's in the following of the dream is where the success lies, not in achieving it. Let achieving it be a bonus. Well, I have used his philosophy now on many occasions throughout my life. I have followed my dreams with a conviction. I've always had them big. Do you know what happens to some people? We actually underestimate our potential. Now, we have to actually plan it, visualize it, break it down, and go for it, and take it out in steps, long term, short term, medium term, the whole lot. Now, the other one is when you do that. And what I have learned about anyone that's successful in life, believe. Belief in yourself is most important. But let me actually tell you this. My grandmother had a philosophy. She was a small four foot 11 woman, couldn't read or write, and she based it into me as a young child. She said, if you think you can, you will, and if you think you can't, you won't. But back to a story, I was 11 years old when I went in to live with my grandmother. And we were poor. We were from the poor side of Cork City. And we used to talk like this boy. But anyway, the thing with it is, I said to my grandmother, I said, Nan, are we always going to be poor? Well, by God, when your grandmother could hit you in the face or clatter you, <laughs> she caught me by the ear. And she dragged me into her front room. We were living in a council house or a government house. And there was four pictures on the wall. And I know some of you will know this, right? In every country in the world, there's pictures on the wall of iconic people. But our ones, I was a Catholic. There was the Sacred Heart. There was the Pope. There was our president. And there was one other picture on the wall. And she caught me up like this when she could. She was only four foot 11. She caught me up. And she said, see that guy up there? And I said, yes, Nan. I was afraid to say anything else. She said, he is the most powerful person in the world. And he's Irish. I said, yes, Nan. And she said, you're my grandson. And I want to tell you, you're as powerful and you're as good as him. Well, with that note, she dropped me down. That guy was JFK. Well, with that in mind, I left school at 14 years of age to actually not be poor anymore. I was a bricklayer. And I used to tell everybody I was going to be a millionaire. And with that in mind, seven years later, I became a millionaire. The cosmos came together because I had a belief. I didn't know how I was going to do it. And then from that point, I kept going. Then I lost focus and direction. And then by the time, in 1986, when I had lost it all, it was an amazing time for me because then, my family came behind me and they had my back. I had no dreams, I had no future, I didn't believe in myself. And my mother came to me one day and she said, and I'll ask you to think about this, what do you want in life? What do you want? What are you going to do about it? Because I'm going to give you the attributes that my mother gave to me in a verse. And I want you to think about what you want. And if you follow these attributes, you will find that you will get them. If you want to think bad enough, you must go out and fight for it. Give up your time and your peace and your sleep for it. If your life is so lonely and useless without it, but all that you do is you dream and your plan is about it. If gladly you fret for it, then sweat for it, then go for it. But please, go for it with all of your capacity, your strength and tenacity. What I will guarantee you is if you do it, anything you want will indeed become a reality. From the time we're born, we're dying. Us as Westerners have only between that and here an average of 80 years to actually fulfill what we want to do. We live in a world that's billions of years old. We have been given a gift. And what I would suggest to everybody is to do the best that you can, can in that period of time to reach your full potential. Well, I am 58 years of age now. 58, huh? And my life is going tick, 
talk. And I know 80 is a benchmark in most of our lives. But what I do know is I have lots of dreams, goals, and aspirations in my personal life, my spiritual life, my business life, and my family life. And you know, what's next for me? What's next for me, the biggest thing is, I have a three-year-old grandson. And that's amazing. And when I look at him, I see all the potential. My ambition is to become the best grandfather that I can be. <laughs> the best grandfather as a mentor. And every one of you are mentors too. Just think about it. What I want to do for him is to give him the benefit of my knowledge of what I have learned. And I'm only here for 18 minutes tonight, and I wish I could talk longer, but I can't. Dream and dream big. Yes, dream and dream big. Remember, the following the dreams where the success lies. I've had a great time following my dreams. Believe in yourself. Believe in your goals and go for it. And on top of that, know what you want. What do you want? What do you want? I want to ask you a question. What's next for you? And what are you going to do about it? I went to the Himalayas to find myself when I tried to commit suicide and I lost myself. And the Buddhist philosophy that I picked up at the time was simple. Life isn't a rehearsal, it's a performance. Go for it. And if you go for it, go for it with all of your capacity. Because I believe in one thing. And I look out here. The only way any of us are going to achieve anything is to be the best that we can be at it. And I know you and I have the power to do it. On that note, thank you. <laughs>